Today I'm going to teach how energy is obtained from eating food. Uh, so we're going to start, if you think about what you had for breakfast or, or lunch, let's say, uh, you know, a bowl of cereal, some toast and jam. Maybe you would have uh, obviously had some starch in the uh, toast uh, with some fruit fructose from the jam that was on it. Uh, of course, some, uh, some more starch in the cereal. How about lactose from the milk? You know, milk sugar there. And of course, it would be uh, some good cereal, you know, chocolate frosted sugar bombs or something. So you got some sucrose sugar on there as well. Turns out that all these sugars are converted to glucose. Different enzymes convert these. Each, all these other carbohydrates are eventually converted to glucose. Uh, the formula for glucose, remember, is C6H12O6. So glucose is floating around in our bloodstream. Uh, now, the, the first step is uh, getting the glucose inside cells. To do that, you use uh, some insulin to, to open up uh, glucose transport proteins. Glucose goes inside the cell, and it's floating around in the cytoplasm. Now, to get it to break down, it's, it's not going to do it automatically on its own just to start with. So the first thing we're going to do is provide some energy to the glucose. So two molecules of ATP combine with the glucose. We're going to use an enzyme to do this job. So there's my little enzyme symbol. Looks like Pac-Man. Okay. After the ATP, the glucose, go into the enzyme, it, it shoves them together, combines them together, and rips uh, the pieces off. And out come two molecules of ADP. So if you think about it, what was what happened to the extra phosphate molecules? That's right, they were they were combined with the glucose. So now glucose actually is a larger molecule, it's a little more unstable, has more energy. So the next thing that happens to it is that it splits in half. As it splits in half, uh, now it, it starts releasing energy. So we're going to have uh, some molecules to pick up that energy. So floating around in the cytoplasm, you have two molecules, half a glucose each. And uh, we're going to use uh, two molecules of ADP uh, to combine with those. Now again, uh, we're going to use some enzymes to do this reaction. We're going to combine all of these steps. Each of these steps has an enzyme that, that accomplishes the job. Uh, so half a glucose molecule combines with ADP inside an enzyme. goes in. This is called substrate level phosphorylation. If you think about what it means, substrate, that's, that's the molecule that fits into an enzyme. Phosphorylation means adding a phosphate. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to take ADP as a substrate, put it into the enzyme, and then add a phosphate to it. So that's going to create ATP. So we're going to do this with two molecules. We have two molecules of ATP. And in another place in the cytoplasm, we have the same thing going on with the other half of the glucose molecule. So we have two more molecules of ATP. Now there's still energy left in the glucose, well, half a glucose molecule, so we're going we're gonna to release some more energy from that. Okay. Instead of using ADP this time, though, we're going to use a different chemical, one that's called NAD. Sometimes you see it written as NAD+. It's just another chemical. It's going to combine with the uh, half a glucose that's left over. Again, we're going to use some enzymes to grab this as a substrate. We're going to put it into the enzyme with the half of glucose, and it's going to create NADH. So think about what, what changed. What happened? That's right. The, the half of glucose donated a hydrogen atom to the NAD. Uh, you know, with an electron also to neutralize that positive charge. So it's got, it's got uh, a little larger molecule now. A little more unstable, a little more energy, NADH. Now the cells want ATP. Our cells run off of ATP. They use ATP to run all of our, all of our reactions. But NADH uh, has energy. It's not the kind the cells want, but we'll hang on to it and use it later. I'll show you later what happens to NADH. Okay, so by the time we're done with uh, these steps, we end up with a molecule. We're going to give it a name. We're going to call this molecule pyruvic acid. Or another another name for it is pyruvate. Now it turns out any chemical that ends in ic acid, you can change the ending to 8 and it's it's the same thing. 
these are exactly the same chemical put an equal sign there so pyruvic acid and pyruvate same thing so for example citric acid would be called that's right citrate uh, lactic acid is lactate okay so when you see those words you realize they're interchangeable okay now you need to realize that this is not finished yet this is just the first step in breaking down glucose to release energy okay this this series of reactions we call this a series of reactions a biochemical pathway this pathway starting at glucose and ending at pyruvic acid this is called glycolysis okay glycolysis the word glue or glyc in latin means sweet lice or lysis is destroy or split so there it is sweet splitting the sweet you know and that's exactly what's happened now we don't want to stop there cells don't want to be left with all this pyruvic acid because it is an acid and it does burn remember how acids affect proteins they start to to denature the protein so you can imagine if this gets uh, left in the cell it could be really bad so cells need to find some way to get rid of that okay and that'll be the the next step that we do